Hello, this is MD McCollum. Today, we're going to take a look at using Crazy Talk Animator 2 to create a character with both an idle and a walk cycle. So let's go ahead and get started. We're in Crazy Talk Animator 2, just a brand new project. So let's go to Actor, Character, double click on G2 Cherry. Now she's got a pretty neat built in uh, phone loop. So let's right click, Action Menu, and let's go down to Stand Phone G Loop. And this is going to be her idle loop, which as you'll notice is 51 frames long. That's what we'll need to export out. So we're ready to go ahead and export this. So let's export this out. We want it to be an image. I use PNG as far as size. Let's try 275 by 450. And let's go 24 frames. And then this is where we want to export from 1 to 51. Now we're ready to export. New folder. I will call this idle. Idle. Now it's generating those 40 images. We're going to use these images now to make a sprite sheet. But let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do our walk before we get that far. Now we can reuse what we have here. We do need to extend the slider back out so we can have our timeline available to us. Let's open up the timeline. Let's take a look at 2D motion. We can select that and delete it. Put her back in her default mode. And now let's go ahead and take a look at a walk cycle. And for that, Let's take a look at using the Puppet Editor. Move. Walk. Let's see what we have here. That looks pretty good. Don't worry about the way it's facing right now. So let's go ahead and record that. We don't have to record an entire timeline of it, but we want to make sure we record an entire loop of it, which that's more than enough there. Now for those of you that are concerned about flipping it, you can come and go to Edit, Flip, Horizontal Flip, and this is the direction that will be native in CTA2 now. So, we've got this, and what we need to do now is extract just our walk cycle out. So there's a step, there's a step. We're getting pretty close. 31. So now we're ready to export this. We've still got our size in there. We're still PNG. Except we want to go 1 to 31. Create a new folder. Walk. Name it Walk. And now I created those 24 images. So now we're finished with Crazy Talk Animator. And we're going to move on to a sprite sheet maker. Now there are two different pieces of software and two different ways to create a sprite sheet. The tutorial that I learned most of this from, which is a quite lengthy one, uh, I mean, I'm going to hand you off to it, give you the link to it, and I do encourage you to look at it. It manually slices up the sprites that sprite sheet creates when you bring it into Unity. And he shows you how to do that. The only problem with manually slicing is you sometimes can get a little quiver or a waver because of your pivot point. If you will use Texture Packer, it has a free importer that goes into Unity that as it imports it, slices it, centers it, no, no waiver whatsoever, and it just works easier. So what we're going to have to do is import what we need from their free uh, uh, tool into Unity. So let's go ahead and take a look. Here's the Asset Store, Texture Packer Importer. It's free. We're going to import it. We don't have to import all of it. So go ahead and click None. All we need to import is the Texture Packer Import Script. So now we're going to import that. 
Now we're ready to actually use Texture Packer. Now Texture Packer, I learned this from John Martin from Reillusion. Uh, he suggested it. It's a great little tool. It has a, a seven day free trial period. I think it may revert to freeware, I'm not sure, but it's definitely going to be a tool that I can put in my toolbox from now on. Now I'm going to go ahead and increase this to 4096 by 4096. And let's add our sprites. Let's start with the idle. Control A to select them all. Now let's just take a look and make sure they all fit. And they did. Now we're ready to publish it. Now this is inside the asset folder of that particular uh, project. This is idle. So I'm going to call it idle. Now it's finished. Now let's create another new one for our walk. Let's go get our preset. Set the size. Now we'll go get our walk sprites. Control A to select all. Open them all in there. And yes, they all fit. Now we're ready to publish. And this is going to be walk. Now we're finished with that. And it may take just a second, but Unity is going to come back. What Unity is doing now is it's actually importing this. It's working with this. So it may take it a second for it to pop up. There we go. I kind of had to force it to. And now everything is already sliced. And what it did was use the information from these two uh, uh, particular items right here to tell it how to slice and center each one of these. So we've saved ourselves a lot of time a lot of effort, and it's just going to work a lot better. Now we're actually going to combine these two spreadsheets to make one character. So let's go ahead and let's go to game object and let's create an empty game object. And let's name that game object character. Now there's a few things we need to add to our character. First thing is we need to be able to see it. So let's go to rendering sprite renderer and we're going to go ahead and use the first frame of our idle motion to represent our character on screen this way we can see the character now we're ready to go ahead and add physics 2d rigid body controller fixed angle and we do want it set to interpolate Now at this point we need to add a couple of colliders to it. So we're going to go to Physics 2D. I'm going to add a circle collider first. Now this is whatever tutorial that I've seen basically says to do. Add a circle collider to the feet. Mainly because apparently it works better when you're going up and down uh, inclines, things like that. So that's all we're doing right now. Now I'm not going to spend a lot of time on making the colliders. Uh, Y'all can do a better job of that. When you're creating your character we're going to go ahead now and we're going to go to physics 2d again and add a box collider size up the collider again like i said before you'll want to take a little more time when you make yours okay now we have our circle collider our box collider, but the problem is there is nothing for it to collide with, so she just drops off. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to drag in an image of a park. We're going to put that back here in the background. Now let's select character and let's move her up to one on the layer. We're resizing. This is just personal preference. And now we're going to need to add another 2D box collider. Or actually the only box collider. So she'll have something to actually collide with on the background. Now 
Now let's see what we have. Okay, she's not falling through anymore. Not real exciting because we haven't added an animation. That's what we're going to do next. Now the next item up, we right click and let's create an animator controller and we will call it Cherry Animation Controller, if I can spell, and I know that's real original. And we'll select our character and over here. We want to add miscellaneous animator. We want to grab that controller we just created and we want to drop it on the animator controller. Now we've tied those together. And this is actually uh, our animator down here and you can see any state is the only state we have. So now we're ready to go ahead and start adding animations. We'll go to the animation tab make sure your character is selected go to the animation tab and this first animation i'm going to call it idle all i did was hit the red button we're going to open up the character and we're going to click the first one shift click hold all of them and move them up into the animation then we're going to change the sample to 24 because that's what we exported it now we're ready to make our second animation, our walk. We're going to create a new clip, call it a walk, and we're going to do the same thing, only we're going to use walk. Click the first one, shift and hold. When you have them all, drag it over and be sure and change your sample rate back to what you exported at 24, 30, whatever it was. Now you'll notice we have an idle and we have a walk. The idle uh, is a different color because that's our default. And it's also because it's the first one we created, so it becomes our default. Now we need to establish a relationship between these two so the character knows when to idle and when to walk. So we're going to right click on idle, make transition, go over to walk, select that transition. And under conditions, you'll notice there's nothing we can use. So we have to create a float named speed. And all of this comes from that tutorial that I've told you about. But I'd recommend that you read. This is the way he does it. And then what we're going to do is use speed. If it is greater than 0 0.01, then it'll go to a walk. Now we're going to go to walk, right click, make transition, go back to idle. Select that transition, same thing, speed, only if it's less than 0 0.01, it'll go to an idle. Now we have a relationship between those. The character will know what to do based on input that we're going to give it here in a minute. So we're ready now to shut off our recording. Now to tie all this together, we're going to have to do a script. And we're not going to get into the mechanics of the script because, again, that's explained in the, the tutorial that I'm pointing you toward. What we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and create the script. So we're going to right-click, create. It's going to be a C-sharp script. We're going to go ahead and call that script Cherry Controller Script. Another real original title. Now let's double-click on that script and open it up may take a while for Mono Develop to open. And I'm not going to get into any of this scripting because, again, that's in the more extended tutorial. What I'm going to do is just cut and paste the script that I use that I got from this tutorial. And we're going to File, Save. The extended tutorial goes into this and tells you what does what, how it works, things like that. Now let's just take a look and make sure we don't have any compiler errors before we associate. Everything's going fine. Idle's working. She's sitting there in her phone idle. Everything's okay.
Now what we need to do is associate the script with the character. And now you see there it is. So let's see what we've done here. Okay, you'll notice it transitions. It goes the direction of the directional arrow keys. Transitions right back into the telephone idle, the cell phone idle. And of course, you could have picked any motions to do this with. Now, there's a lot more uh, as far as going in and doing jumps, things like that. The tutorial I'm going to hand you off to explains all of this in much more detail. This is just a condensed version of how to use Crazy Talk Animator to quickly create a character, then get that 2D character inside of Unity. One more thing before I go, and that is uh, cleaning up our mess. One of the reasons I left all this in the root was so you could see what was being created. But we really need to clean this up because a game can get very, very complicated. So let's go in and create a folder called Sprites. Now you can just dump all your sprites into that folder, or you can come in and create other folders, depending on how complicated, for characters, props, or whatever, however you want to do it. So we will drag that into character, that into character, that into props. Next. Create another folder, animations, idle, idle, can go into animations and the animation controller can go into animations. Now the walk and idle from uh, texture packer, that can go right in with your characters and your sprites. Now we can leave it like it is, you can see how it's already being cleaned up or we can create yet another folder which I would recommend for scripts. Because in a game, you're going to have more than one script. And then we move that in to scripts. And now you will notice how much cleaner everything is. You don't just have everything dumped in to the root of the assets. You actually know where to go in and find things if this would turn complicated or into a large project. This is just recommended better practice. Once again, I hope this helps.